Cybox Art and Open Source, an artistic approach on how to stay golden. And please give our speaker Liu a warm round of applause. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm super happy you came to see my talk today. Uh, I think it's quite a special topic because I'm not a programmer. I'm not talking about much technology. I'm more talking about art, about a really special way to see the world and yeah, maybe even celebrating that, that way as a kind of weapon, as a kind of language. Yeah, uh, first I would like to introduce myself. My name is Leo. Um, I work as artist under the name Lou J.P. Musknuk. I'm an art student uh, at the Art Academy in Munich, Academy of Fine Arts Munich, uh, in the class for digital and time-based media. Um, I origin from the, from the uh, politically left left-wing direction, which led me also to body modification. I wear an NSC chip inside of my hand, and uh, I'm highly interested in all that field because I see it as a kind of merging between human and machine very soon. I guess you guys can imagine that, and you're super open to the topic. And um, yeah, let's just jump through that thing. Well, I have a rough outline, introduction. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my art, my personal work, and my intention. Um, then I would like to try to talk about the definition of art, which is not really easy. Um, I would like to show you some artists. The talk right after me contains some I'm a big fan of as well. <laughs> I would like to uh, talk about my personal autism theories. Leider viel Neues auf dem Mikrofon. Jetzt hat ich hier ein anderes. Okay. Hallo? Oh, viel besser. War ich zu laut? All right. So, yeah, I would like to tell you more about my personal autism theories, that's how I call it. Um, I would like to suggest some solutions to the actual social problems that I see as an artist and as a human, basically. And uh, then I would like to have a discussion with you, if you guys are in. Um, I would like to ask you to interrupt me anytime. You can just raise your hand if you want to tell me something, if you want to... Uh, add any facts because I'm not super fact orientated. Uh, I'm more mindful and into consciousness, a little, bit, a little bit spiritual, but in a cyborg way, as I say. So you can interrupt me anytime. And uh, I also want to point out that uh, the movie I'm going to show you is maybe nothing for kids. So if there's any kids or people that are lightheaded, I don't want you to faint. So. Please, maybe uh, leave the room now if you don't want to see that movie. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to start with the movie. That's a spontaneous... Uh, you know what I mean. Decision, right? <laughs> uh, so we have some music and you see what I do. Maybe that's easier.
So I'm going to stop here. I think you, you saw what uh, I wanted to use for my introduction. Um, I'm already 34 uh, years old. I'm, I'm a carpenter. I'm a CPR, like uh, emergency worker and um, tattoo artist. And uh, I realized that a lot of people judge me for this work, especially. I, uh, I use it as my example because I can explain my kind of art best in this piece. Um, the reason I did that was actually to try to perform a time jump in an artistic ideology. So I made a tattoo and three weeks later I decided to remove that tattoo. I put it in formaldehyde and I put it into an art gallery. This actually tells a lot to me. Um, I got judged for that work. It's nothing about any psychiatric issues I have. I didn't enjoy it. Actually, it was a real hard uh, thing to do for me, but to me it was really important. Because as an artist, you have a lot of pressure. You have to be present. Uh, if you guys know Marina Abramovic, she started stuff like that. Uh, in the 60s already, and um, yeah, I think um, she was on a similar road like me. Um, if you see that a piece of my body physically is exhibited in a gallery, that means the artist, artist is present even if he or she is not present. I need to drink something, sorry. So, the piece of myself, it will not only be present in that moment I exhibited it, but it also will be in the future. That means that I perform a time jump with my DNA ideology. I know uh, it's not proper because I think the piece of skin, the tattoo, will not last very long. My DNA might be killed by the formaldehyde, but in theory, it shows that I well, part of me, which is only a little square piece, is already existing in the future. Maybe in some art collection, maybe not. Maybe it's going to land in the trash, I don't know. But the message is that it's important to understand that even a pixel, three times three centimeter, of a body of you, of a picture of cells of you, represent all of you. Because... If you, if you heard about cell memory, you know that your body is defined out of all the mass of your cells, right? So we are mainly water and um, we define ourselves through our minds sometimes. Some people do that even through their bodies. Um, but to me, it's like a never-ending chain. My, my skin is renewing every night, every day. I lose a part of myself. Every breath I take is exchange. This process is really important to me. That's also why I show all those, um, all those fast pictures, because we are living in a world that adjusts processes. There's no products anymore that are to be important to me. Uh, I don't know if any one of you has read the Cyborg Manifesto by Donna Haraway. I really, I really would like to suggest it to you. Um, it's really feministic, that's what people say. Um, I have my own opinion about it, but I'm not here to discuss that. Uh, I just would like to recommend you to, to read it and build your own opinion about it. As well as uh, the German book, Jäger, Sammler und Kritiker by, by Brecht. He's kind of like a pop philosophy guy. I like him, he has a good opinion. But as always, please, build up your own opinion and check it out. Uh, this one is a fancy effect by Apple, I like it. Uh, <laughs> um, this one is another work I did. Um, as you can see, my main topic is the overwhelming in this today's world. So I built this uh, kind of like ball um, out of monitors. It's 25 monitors, 
26 Raspberry Pis and zeros as well. And it's bound on there with uh, Shibari ropes. Those are Japanese ropes. Because I think in times where we have to question AI and humanity, collective intelligence, cloud uploads, you imagine what I, what I mean? Um, I think the most important question is what's going to happen about authority? I mean, if I lose my leg and my leg is going to reproduce, still I'm 75% roughly of myself if I see myself as a bunch of cells. But the rest of it, it's going to be metal maybe or some high pros prosthetic device. How much of me is going to be still me? Since I, since I believe in the cell memory, I think the question is, which leg is going to win? <laughs> I mean, if the right one is not real, the left one is real, and me and my brain is steering both of them. What if the right leg decides to go another way suddenly because it's maybe metal and not part of me, or is my body going to adapt it? Like, uh, for example, I think the, the chip I have, it's kind of like collaborating in a weird way with my body because I'm weather sensitive. I bet a lot of you know that. Uh, from themselves, if I have a scar, scar tissue, whatever, and it's going to start to rain, it's going to get itchy, it's going to feel funny, stuff like that. The same happens to me with the uh, tissue around my microchip. Once I get close to magnets, I talk to many people, and they told me they, they believe that could be possible because there's metal inside, right? That's logical. So. Um, if I imagine I had a whole leg, or maybe even more, a whole torso, whatever, in the very uh, far away future, I wouldn't really know what would happen in questions of authority, how much of myself is going to have control over the rest. And if I lose half of my brain, it's going to reproduce in a computer, what decisions are going to be made different? Yeah. Um, the work um, over here is exactly discussing that through some symbolism. Because you can see those ropes, they are used in bondage. You maybe know that from the BDSM uh, and fetish area. And I wanted to show that those videos all around the bar, um, which are half machines, like war machines, war machines in in the building, in the making by uh, companies I don't have to mention. <laughs> um, it shows a lot of holographic stuff. It shows technology, about 70%. And the rest of it is, is nature. I mean, I put some videos of bees and stuff. I, I think it's really hard to describe art. You should step inside to understand, but um, I think the the overwhelming of the actual world is a big problem. It's going to be a big problem. And uh, I think you can also see the effect already on the kids. I, I have a son. And I remember when he was five years old, I showed him a bunch of photographs, you know, like physical photographs. And uh, what he did was that move. And the pictures flew away because he didn't understand it's not a tablet. And at that point, I, I tried, or I started to understand that the uh, haptical sensations and all that, it's going to start to change. It's like the body hair changes because we're not in the blizzarding cold anymore. It's a lot of genetic and evolutionary stuff going on. And I think uh, as an artist, my, my tool to try to give a sense of what's going to happen in the future to people is make exhibitions, just talk to them through the language of art. Yeah. So what is art, especially conceptual art? Um, I don't think uh, you don't know what conceptual art is, but I, I felt the need to show this definition of the internet. It says, an art form in which the artist's intent is to convey a concept rather than to create an art object. Sorry, it's just so hard. <laughs> well, I think that's a really easy definition. 
it's made easy, but it's not that easy because if you see this whole camp as a sculpture, as I do, a social sculpture, you might be reminded of uh, and people like, like boys, but actually sculptures like this, you cannot hang over your couch, you cannot sell them for millions, but they exist and they are the really, really important pieces of art. That's how I see it. Um, it's relative, it's all relative, of course, I would like to sell some crappy shit that somebody can put over the couch and get millions for it, so I can buy new artsy stuff and change the world in a naive way uh, I do as an artist. But yeah, I mean, I think this definition is so broad and so wide that there's a lot of space for other disciplines as well. So uh, I don't know if you guys know Stellark. He's a really cool artist. Um, I'm in touch with him actually. He used to do a lot of things. He had this ear in his arm. Um, he's getting hooked. He's getting body suspensions. He's uh, yeah, a great guy in starting the whole scene. And actually he got a body suspension in the Art Academy of Munich a long time ago. Uh, also, Beuys is a very important person to me because, especially not because he is a cool guy and he's super crazy and I admire him, but also he was the one starting off with all that social sculpture thing. I did several social sculptures, but it's always hard to sell stuff like that, so it's more like people smile at you, like, oh, nice, she's trying to do something. But as I said, to me, that's the essential part of art. Of course, I guess you know Moon Rebus and Neil Harbison. Cool people, they are thinking about the, uh, they founded the Cyborg Foundation. I think the talk is right after this, so I'm really looking forward to it. Maybe you should listen at that one too, if you're here. Um, Neil is the guy with the antenna on his head who can uh, basically hear colors, if I understood it right. Um, I think it's really, really good that those guys start to raise awareness for all the personification thing of cyborgs. I mean, if you have a body part that is not you, but it's practically inside of you or implemented in some way, that still means it's a part of you, so it should get rights as well. But that's a very long dis discussion, so I reduce that to to my power. <laughs> well, here's some nice pictures of those guys. On the bottom right, Stellark with one of his uh, super cool, fancy devices he did. There's many videos if you want to research them. I promise you find a lot. Well, now here's my autism theories. As an artist, I, I like to play in my mind. Conceptual art is like, um, how do I say that? It's like a big playground for me to go all crazy. I can change my personalities kind of like David Bowie did. I can play around, I can imagine things, I can talk about Schrodinger's cat, stuff like that. So in my opinion, autism, especially Asperger's and you know, that. Uh, Simon, what's his name, Cohen, thingy about being autistic, to me represents a, a strong sense of evolution. I researched a lot and it's hard to put that in words, but I realized there's a lot of parallels in autistic people and evolution. In, in my eyes, uh, it's a slow evolution that's pointing into the direction that it's uh, harder for the brain to process some things and at the same time do some other. But since we are in an Anthropocene time age, it's going to happen anyway. So, of course, if we use computers a lot, of course our kids start to import, import the haptical stuff. 
But uh, not only that, I even think that all those kids from engineers and IT managers that are autistic or on the spectrum, as you would say it, they are basically the future because they are evoluting into a world where it's easier to focus on yourself and maybe add social skills if you choose to. So I think um, the most important thing is to talk about solutions. So uh, the most important point I, I have here on my little sheet is be interdisciplinary. I realize a lot of people just separate, they isolate. The physicists hang out with the physicist, the artists do the art stuff, the hackers do the hack stuff, but it's much more important to, to, to generate a fusion. In the same named festival, you can see that, and you can see it here as well, how good it works. But I think we should spread that more in the world in general. Then, uh, to me, it's really important to sharpen social skills. That's easy to say, but it's not that easy, actually. We start to move away from people. We don't respect each other that much anymore. That's what I can see on the internet sometimes. We try to anonymize ourselves, and I don't think that's a good thing. What is worse, actually, is to steal data from people, of course. But if we have the, the power to change that now, we should do that. Well, communication is essential. That's true. If you are not able to communicate, no matter if your language is art or design or Python, you're not able to do anything, right? So you should try to listen to other people, get back to the communication skills because they are super essential. And then art can be a weapon or a language or a switch. So as I said, Boyce is super right. And he also said that everybody is an artist. So if you code, even if you go to the toilet, you can see everything you do as art if you do it in a positive way. Because every change starts in you. So of course, you can always complain and say society sucks. And I hate those politicians. And we know people that talk like that, right? But change actually always begins in you. So if you have this whole consciousness, karma, positivity discussion up, believe it. I think it's true. I mean, there was that story that happened to me a couple of days ago where I paid this super nice guy a beer because he forgot his wallet at the tent. And uh, yeah, you know, he, he came back the next day. He gave me the money for the beer and he gave me an extra five. And he told me, hey, you gave me this even if I might not have found you and stuff like that. Here you get the Zinsen. <laughs> you get this five extra and then I shared it to the next person. And of course this is a, the karma chain that will never stop. I think a lot of people still didn't understand that and it's not as unimportant as you think. Well, not you in, in certain, but society. And also one point I, I really observe in every social area. Knowledge has to be shared. Jealousy always returns. So even in the left wing where people share usually everywhere, people envy each other. But it's idiotic to do that. If you're jealous about something somebody else reached, it's going to give you a bad feeling. It's going to fuck up your own shit in English. I think a lot of people still didn't understand that, and it's really important. And uh, yeah, here's Sophia. She's uh, my starting point for any discussion, because I think she's like, I don't know, kind of like Trump, but in a technology way. So yeah, does anyone want to say something? Okay, so as always, um, if you have something to contribute, we have two microphone angels. Um, because of the recording, you need to speak into a microphone to be heard. So please uh, line up behind the microphone angels or make yourself visible to them. Then they may also come to you. All right, there we go. On the stage left. 
Hey, I liked your talk and I agree with your premise a lot. Um, and I think since, you know, we're talking about how we're already kind of cybernetic and how uh, media and communication, we're all influencing each other and our ideas are living on. Is there something really special you find about the way, about specifically uh, body modification, like what your own personal body has to do with that, if that question makes sense? Like, is there some potency in the body? Yeah, well, uh, I see that really futuristic because, um, I mean, of course we have wearables and we have smartphones, but to me a smartphone is already a bodily extension because it's a, it's a brain prosthetic. My iCloud, it's, it's that shit I cannot store in my brain. Well, or whatever cloud, I don't want to reduce it to <laughs> Apple, but um, I have all those storages and all that stuff, but it represents my memory in a technical way. So, yeah, I think um, it's really important to use the body even, um, you know, like create some nano stuff that can be inside of you and morph because it's, it's stupid. We are wasting the planet, but I think by generate, generating energy out of our own body, out of ourselves, we could, we could maybe stop that even if it's too late. Maybe we could find ways to connect with machines, to use AI, to, you know, save voltage, to generate solar cells, to improve productivity. In a way, it's not going to destroy things, basically. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or contributions? Otherwise, maybe if someone could just volunteer to have a look at the stream, like at the ISC and Twitter, to see if anyone else has a question that's not in the room. Um, I don't think we have a signal angel officially, but maybe someone can step up and become a signal angel temporarily. Otherwise, do you have anything else you want to say? Um, no. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, I'm not really good in talking out, I'm more a connecting person, so I'm going to switch the yellow LED on my cardio on. And uh, if you want to come up and talk to me face to face, that's much more interesting, I guess, because I would like to collect all your opinions and kind of like put it into my art, which is not only a narcissistic approach, it's more like collecting a social sculpture out of people like you. Here's a lot of intelligent and skilled people, and I'm really curious about your opinions about all the future stuff I tried to mention. Thanks for coming. Any, anyone else? Okay, please.